we do the issues through the conflicts we have with them. When our children see, in the midst of the turmoil of life, they see, they see their parents not in denial, but understanding, carrying themselves in very different ways in those challenges. That creates safety. That is a place of guidance. That is a, a firm rule of inspiration for those kids. Conscious parenting understands that parenting is really about raising the parental self more so than it is about raising the child self. And the parent who can understand that begins to use this rich that our children use in to really uncover their own patterns of that reality, heal it, and send it, and reach a higher and higher for their own self. To be one of the families, to be a sense of whatever space we are in. If we are in the it does not mean watching it be or doing something else. If we are stuck in the heart of each other, then we should be impressed. We feel blamed. Let's have fun with what it is, not thinking about what it is for dinner. Me and my thought, in the me and my thought, we rest on the show and we rest in the moment. I think we have this. I think we have this. That I'm excited to, and that I'm excited to train those in the white side of the I want them all to be excited. I want them all to have, and I want them all to have. And I'm asking, where do kids go to learn? Because where do kids go to learn? They don't go to school to learn love. 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 I think that's the thing most important. The most important for people, including myself, including my kids, to learn our child anyway. And what a great opportunity to get into And what are those three books that I was reading to my kids every night? We're mindful, we're inspiring, we're naive. For us, it's about uh, download at the end of the night, lying in bed together, taking deep breaths, and um, letting her download her day and every reaction she's had and how she feels about everything. And then just being really present when she's, because that's when the truth comes out, right? It's like, how was school? Fine. And then in bed at night, it's like, well, this happened and this happened. Trying to, you know, trying to find for her, to help her navigate that path, which is difficult even at eight. Every parent should have, you know, a book like Milton's Secret read to their kids every night. The ones that aren't reading the book every night, how easy is it for them to go to the theater? How easy for them to sit home and watch something like this that is not an product? Great. So they're together with their family in entertainment, but that the message is actually valuable. That it yeah, you know, creates that ripple effect that you know, we are doing good in the world. A great leader, like a great parent is very aware of who they are, what matters to them, what their priorities are. Um, they are managers of their emotions, and they are quite openly identified and triggered by their thoughts. And I think in maturity, we have not had very many models of that in our entertainment. And um, the Built Secret movie is undertaking to provide just that kind of model. Models what happens when parents begin to deeply take a look at their own thoughts and their own processes and only, and only then do they not automatically pass them on to their children. When a parent understands that if they evolve to a higher state of joy, abundance, and awareness in their own lives, then quite naturally this will translate into raising their own children with great consciousness to make their child. Okay, so welcome everyone. Thanks for uh, staying here while we were preparing. And uh, we have two chairs which were reserved, but if they are, are still available in minutes, you know, first come, first serve. <laughs> so feel free to, uh, to take it. And uh, this evening, it's a special evening. Some people come from the Eckhart Tolle Vancouver meetup and uh, some familiar faces. For some people, probably it's the first time here. And uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Barnett, Bain, and Steven, and Ryan, which are the hearts and minds of uh, uh, turning uh, Milton's uh, secret uh, book written by uh, Eckhart Tolle into a movie. And uh, this evening we're here to share presence, uh, to share how they embody uh, mindfulness in their daily work uh, as entertainment professionals. 
And uh, to take your questions, uh, I'm going to circulate some white paper. So if you want to write your questions here later on, please feel free to do so. For people who are following us online, because we're having a Google Hangout, uh, uh, sometimes I'm going to look in the camera, sometimes I'm going to look to the audience. So that's, that's why, why we're switching back forward. And for people, people who are online, please send your questions to email. Uh, I posted uh, my email address on the Google Plus page. And um, what you have on the menu this evening, uh, we start with the silent meditation. The reason being that uh, usually at our meetups, we don't have many, many words. I do more of the space for space and space for content. But this evening, we are pleased with having like uh, meaningful words. So we start with a bit of silence just to create an inner space. And then uh, I'm going uh, to share. Uh, uh, mindfulness with us. After that, uh, we're going to have a question and answers. So I prepare some questions myself. And again, if you have questions yourself, please uh, write them down. You can probably read a few pages from the Power of Now. And uh, all along the evening, we're going to see uh, what's happening with Milton Secret, some uh, video interviews, uh, our digital material that Stephen, Ryan, and Barney have prepared. And uh, we're going to see how to support that project to become a reality. So, so I, think I think we start with uh, our silent meditation. So, so if someone looks in a very uh, 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 silent, hopefully they don't feel they don't, don't think that the camera just freeze on us. But you know, it's going to be issue. You want to say anything? Yeah, I was going to say sorry, just because we're going to go to meditation. Could Whoever's standing, there's lots, there's some floor spaces you don't mind sitting down. Do you want to be more comfortable? Would you like to come here with that standing? Would be better? I think there's enough space here. All right, this is overwhelming. Well, I'm asking my friend. I'm going to come here and try to spend any of you, so I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Make your way here. Just want to make sure everyone's comfortable. It's up here as well, so. Wait, sit down. Yes, absolutely. Sit down. Yeah. Do you have a chair? All right. All right. Perfect. I just want to get to what's important for meditation. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we're so going to use uh, technology to support us. So you need to check the psychological work, uh, watch time. And, uh, and uh, it's going to be, be a bell in between, like, like a short reminder. reminder. Bring uh, away uh, back uh, to your, your body present, present moment. And uh, yeah, so just sit comfortably and uh, we start with me. <laughs>
Thank you for creating this uh, new net of Now we will uh, this steel steel net. We have net. Thank you, thank you. Well, that felt good. I know that it made a great help. Somebody um, sent me uh, some really profound wisdom from a great thinker. And I want to share it with you. What day is it? asked Pooh. It's today, sweet piglet. Ah. Uh, my favorite day. <laughs> so just, just love that. I got that like five minutes before we walked in. So thank you so much for being here with us tonight. It's really exciting to be here. It's exciting to be back in Canada. I'm Canadian, and um, I uh, remember how much I love it here when I remember to be here. So uh, it's thrilling to be here with you. Um, so I am Barnett Bain, and I'm directing the movie. Uh, I'll share a little bit to introduce why I'm here and, and why this matters to me. Sixty years ago, my parents were fighting a really bitter divorce. And um, unfortunately for me, my mother was pregnant with me uh, for the entire time of the divorce. Yes, I am 60. <laughs> <laughs> and when, um, when she finally birthed me into the world, you can imagine she was stressed, bitter, um, unsafe, insecure. Uh, my father had abandoned us and uh, had uh, angry stories of his own. So to come into the world as an infant connected to presence uh, into an environment where I was immediately handed off to relatives to um, take care of me, it was, you can imagine how I might have felt, right? Stressed and uh, unsafe and insecure and very concerned that um, my needs would not be met. So um, I want to share an experience with you that uh, will give you an insight into the kind of experience that I underwent, and that I believe we all we all experience that breaks the connection with presence, with essence that we enter with. So if you would just all take uh, three very deep, very deep full breaths and get centered for a second. And think of something really unpleasant, something that really bothers you or frightens you or stresses you, somebody that that offends you, a problem that you have uh, with a relationship or a family member, um, a health concern, a financial concern, something very threatening. And at the count of three, I want you to push that energy away from you, like this. One, two, three, you push it away from you, like this. One, two, three. Stop, you're going to say. So, I'm going to count to three. <laughs> you're going to focus in on this negativity. And on three, push it away and say stop. One, two, three, stop! What do you notice? Mine's <laughs> Mine's also stuck in that stuff moment. And are you breathing? No. 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 <laughs> so in that instant, 
uh, we flee the body. We flee into um, the world of thought forms, but we're not incarnated. We're not having a somatic experience. We sever the connection with now. We're in a virtual reality of thoughts. And this becomes our strategy for creating safety or for preserving ourselves from the pain of being fully present at a time when we don't have the skills, the tools, the ability to respond as small people to the challenges of life. And with practice and habit, we, in short order, become more, fa more familiar and more comfortable with operating in the thought forms than with being in the body, which is the only place that we have access to now. So I don't want you all to be um, stuck there. Uh, there are many ways to, uh, to regain access to the body and to the present and to the now. And one of them is breath work. And so um, uh, with all due respect, and thanks to my wife who taught me this, um, take, uh, I'm going to ask you to take a number of breaths. But these are going to be very specific kind of breaths, a very charged breath. I'm going to ask you to breathe into the top of your chest deeply, like right around your clavicle. And with open mouths, you're gonna, it's going to look something like this. And we're going to do it together now. Five of these charged breaths. You ready? Hold it. Notice what you're feeling in your body. Notice if there's any sense of aliveness, any tingling, any sensation. And now another round. Breathe. Notice what's going on in your body. One more. Deep breath, breathe. Notice what's going on in your body. <coughs> Tingling, aliveness. How do you feel? So this sense of well-being is available to us. As Sandy likes to remind me, we're always only three breaths away from this. There are other ways of remembering, um, remembering our essence. But we fall out of the body so quickly, and there is no possibility of being present if we are not here, if we're not in the body. And so when we read uh, Eckhart referring to, um, specifically in Milton's Secret, about feeling the light, the tingling sensation in the body. This is what he is referring to. There is a vibration and an aliveness. And then you know that you're grounded. You know that you're here. You know that you can meet and be met. And you know that we're no longer infants. From this place, we can respond to the challenges of life as a expression of our character, our values, who we are, we bring to the moment, as the Buddhists say, spontaneous right action. It's not the stuff of children. That's the stuff of people who have had some life experience, have explored who they are, trust who they are, and in their bodies, in the moment, in their element, we can be in a dance with mystery. 
so I thought that uh, it would help for us to have a conversation about uh, what we are about here with making of the Milton Secret movie. And it would be much more dramatic from this place because this is why we're making the movie. We can talk about these ideas and we can read about these ideas and we can hear speakers about these ideas. We can study them. We can try to grok them in the head that doesn't exist in the head. It happens in the body. And uh, the reason that Thankfully, here's a community who is so passionate about being incarnated in the body. The reason uh, that it has been so challenging for us is because we don't have models. We occasionally see someone in the world, Eckhart, you know, you see the Dalai Lama and the 6 o'clock news and you think, well, there's something very groovy about this guy. <laughs> but I've never been stuck in traffic with him. I've never, missed, I've never missed my flight at the airport with him. So I've never been with him in order to see, to have an experience, which is how human beings most effectively and powerfully learn by witnessing. We have not had the, the blessing of being with somebody who is fully incarnated in order to see how they respond to life. <coughs> Well, we're making a film in order to model, in order to allow people to be a witness to that without teaching, without a tutorial. It's not um, a lecture. It's a story about a t really stressed out kid in a really stressed out family. His parents have marital problems. They have financial problems. They're constantly buried in their devices. They think that they're all loving and they're doing the best they can, but they're not even in their skin, as we've just experienced for ourselves. And he lives in a community and in a world that is increasingly lost and increasingly abandoned being in the body. And so everybody is on their devices and people have less and less ability to really respond to the challenges because they're in a world of thought that has limitations. That world is fairly maxed out. We've done a really beautiful job of getting here, but this alone will not be sufficient to take us to where we need to go. We need to be firing on more cylinders, other, other intelligences body intelligences, heart intelligences, and they have to be coherent. We don't leave the head behind, but they have to be in balance. So to make a story where we see somebody in a community that is operating here, and he has an experience um, because his grandfather visits a man played by Peter Fonda who, had a, who was a hellion and had a wild life uh, and was Easy Rider, and was a um, not-so-good dad, and a really lousy husband, uh, and who late in life has dropped into his heart, and has not guilt, but has a sorrow, a beautiful sorrow, a remorse that is born out of his own active experience of having been there, he's able to care for people, and he's able to know where they are. He doesn't feel he has to fix anybody, but he can be with them and understand them inside his body. And this boy sees this kind of behavior. And it's, he's not perfect. The grandfather's not perfect. He goes out and he gets in his head as well, but he knows how to bring himself back. And to see those kinds of things just in a story extraordinary behavior in an ordinary story. That to me is the big game. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I'm alive is to uh, explore these things, to heal these things, and also to find every way I can to share them. And film is, is one of those reasons. So that's why this matters to me. I've gone on a long time, probably too long. Uh, but thank you for your patience. <laughs> yeah. So, 
I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass around there. If you want to write a question, I have only one. I have one that has five colors, so you can like you can group it. Yeah, that's fine. 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 Yeah, your journey to connecting uh, to Newton's secrets, uh, with Eckhart, uh, and also Barnett, and uh, how important uh, is to be embodied. So it's like embodied spirituality, because all can, uh, like, there is a tendency to feel that, you know, I'm going to move to a mountain, live in a cabin there, far from society, and that's where I really connect to oneness. But that's just, you know, escape. Just it's, escape. Like, it's, it's like premature transcendence syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's, a, it's a head trip. Yeah. We're in the world in order to be in the world, to make the world our monasteries. We're here to, to love and to be loved in the body. And so how, like, uh, relates? to one of the many heads that you mirror and that of course are not who you are in entertainment and transformation entertainment. So the question is open to all of you. <laughs> Steve? <laughs> Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> well, I, uh, so, so I really, uh, basically the question is uh, how they embody spirituality uh, in their profession in this case, oh, yeah. which is, you know, something that they do, but it's not who that we are, who they are. Right. But uh, we were just talking about practical ways to mm -hmm. live spirituality in daily life. Uh, but thanks for asking, because sometimes I go <laughs> quite long and then people wonder <laughs> if you are supposed to speak about it. Um, do you want to I think I've spoken quite a bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have a technique, right? Why you start with yours? <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Let's not get shy in front of a whole <laughs> Google Hangout. <laughs> uh, what, what, one thing I, I did want to talk about a little bit is we've, in, in the campaign that we've been uh, releasing here recently, we've talked a lot about transformational entertainment. And our background is we've made a lot of documentary films of myself. I always been making transformational entertainment. And so we've always tried to tell stories that would enlighten and challenge. And as Eckhart says, hopefully people, after they watch them, they leave the theater a little bit different than they were when they arrived. So that's really my personal connection is, is through the history of, of documentary films that we've made. And it's been very interesting um, as we've met all these wonderful, mindful people that uh, Barnett is associated with from LA and all over the US and Canada. It's been very interesting to do uh, interviews with them and uh, explore their concepts of mindfulness. So I encourage you to watch some of the videos we're putting out on uh, on Facebook and our YouTube channels. Uh, I guess you got a taste of the new one uh, we just released today about conscious parenting. Um, Steve? Mm -hmm. I concur. <laughs> 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 yes, no, we're really, um, um, thanks Frank for asking the question, we're just, we're just very fortunate obviously to, to be involved in this project, um, I think we're all here for the same reason, um, or similar reasons, is that we, we feel that this kind of material is needed and the world is ready to have this kind of, um, this kind of production and, and we hope that this, this, uh, this film can act as a catalyst. To, to start promoting more of this kind of material to the mainstream. That's really our focus here. Uh, we've got Barnett here. Um, he's the man to do it. Um, and um, we really fi find that reaching out to, to, the, to the hardcore fans, the people who really are connected to this material, even before we shoot, really allows us to, to feel that energy and to continue to um, move ahead with this, with this project. I mean, if it's not you know, if it wasn't for you all, then what would be the reason to do this, right? So this is this is this is the kind of overwhelming support that we it really helps charge us, and we thank you personally. That means everything to me. So I thank you so much. Um, that's really 
how we're going to transition, I believe, into this new paradigm that we're going through is that we support each other from an earlier on stage and we spread the word. Um, so um, I guess that's why we're all here, to spread the word and talk about this. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Frank, just I'm just going to sort of open it up to the people. I know you're collecting some questions too, but um, is it time for question period now or is that uh, it's always time? There's always time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, and this is an interactive uh, evening. Um, we we do have some. You know, we'd like to show you some more of our videos and and to gather your feedback. Where, as you're, I don't know if you're all aware right now, but we are. Is everyone aware that we're actually in a crowdfunding campaign? Does most? Does anyone? Does anyone not know what that is or what I'm talking about right now? You don't know? Okay. So we have initiated a, a crowdfunding is a way to um, build awareness and support um, through socially, through either online or, or, or this, is, this is a crowd, right? So um, it's, um, it really is the ability to connect with fans before we actually produce something to see if there's a demand to it, see if there's a need for it, and to gather feedback so when we start producing this kind of content, we know if we're aligned and we know what kind of support we have and then you can help us literally spread the message to the world. It's um, We're slowly moving away from this broadcast era that's been sort of the last hundred years and moving almost more into the old oral traditions, how they used to be, where literally the story, the quality of the story is what is what uh, eventually rises to the top and is spread. And thanks to the internet, I mean there's always the dark side to everything, but the light of the internet, of course, is that's the technology that's allowing us to for these stories to spread. I guess one maybe buzzword that people are using is that we're now are moving into the digital age. So crowdfunding is um, something that has grown out of this in a way that um, has never really happened before from the digital arena, allowing people to comment, to share, to to even donate to a project as it's being developed earlier on, and to to gain that support. So. Is that is that clear to everyone? I guess of what's happening. So, so what we've decided to do is, as as producers is to is to help um, augment our financing through the crowd um, and build the awareness through that that fan base earlier on. And it's it's been wonderful. we we started a Facebook page. I don't know if you've all been on it, but we'll we'll show you where everything is. And we've we've, we've got I don't know almost twenty thousand Facebook fans I think already on our Facebook page I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's overwhelming support, and we haven't even started, you know, produ uh, producing the film yet. We're we're planning to go into production in the new year, um, and uh, of course we have a crowdfunding page, which we can show you a little bit more, which really tells the whole entire story of the project a little earlier. So yeah, so I ramble a lot, so just <laughs> cut me off anytime. So <laughs> so there is one question here, I think, for Barnett. Okay. Oh, question. The question is, can you talk about taking the training wheels off? Uh, which some of you mentioned someplace else. It's true. And why is now the time? Oh, well, I could go with that one. Um, I am absolutely certain that everyone in this room has a history of uh, leading a self examined life, that you have taken the workshops and that you have read the books and that you have followed a very deep heart commitment to recognizing, to acknowledging, to forgiving and to releasing the thoughts and the beliefs and the choices and the decisions and the attitudes and the feelings the mix of which um, has led to the circumstances of your lives. And in an effort to have a more enchanted life with more freedom, with more possibility, with a juicier, wilder imagination, you have explored how to deconstruct um, that armored reality, that framework. Right? Am I on? I'm seeing nods. Well, we have um, done the homework individually and sufficiently. Can we go on? Yes, but we're getting obsessive. So I'm not saying we should stop. 
but we have done the homework sufficiently and the, uh, as individuals and as a community where we are uh, more masterful at embodying the idea, these kinds of ideas in a way that is conscious um, and living them to a degree that has not ever been lived in this way on this planet. And we uh, are at this place where we are facing challenges um, too great to be met by logic and reason. They can only be responded to um, by capacities broader than logic and reason without cutting free of logic and reason, but by an authorship and an ownership that we do indeed create our own realities. And the degree to which we are present, um, we not only create them, but we move into a place of co-creativity with something more and beyond. Uh, so that quite simply, the challenges uh, that we face, many of us as individuals and as a world, will not be met. And you uh, and I have prepared uh, long and for some of us long enough uh, to take off the train wheels and wobble out um, into the unknown and be the champions, create the maps uh, for others to follow. So I get moved by the speaking of this. It's very much my life's work. And I know that you would not be here in the room uh, if it was not a high priority, if not the, the priority of your lives. And so practice time is over. And uh, we can be the messages that we wish to see. The fact is we are already the messages we wish to see. So now the degree to which we own that. Uh, we will begin to see uh, an, an accelerated acceleration of change that um, will boggle the mind because the mind is not equipped to handle um, the moment. That is why it is very rarely in the now. I hope that responded to... <laughs> Okay, so maybe I'll just read off some of the questions. Sure. Uh, well, you can take them. I don't know if you can take some of them. Why did you decide to what go? What for dinner? I like that. <laughs> Popcorns. <laughs> you actually cut that out of the <laughs> Sorry. Dinner? Um, why did you decide to go to the crowdfunding to fund this project? Um, actually, I do want to take that one. Do you want to take that yeah. one? Yeah. You, can, you can add on to it, but uh, it kind of, I, I do want to take that. That kind of rolls into this. And well. was there not enough interest with the production company? Uh, yeah. So that's both of those are, are uh, accurate statements. There is interest by the mainstream, the industrial uh, entertainment business. Uh, but. If you're going to make a film in, um, in France or Quebec, you should speak French. So if you're going to make a film about presence, you um, are better served as a messenger if you understand presence. And if it's not a concept, because as we've just experienced, conceptually, a concept has nothing to do with embodiment. This will not be figured out. This will presence will not be captured in the dust of a blackboard equation. It does not live within the realm of thought forms. And so to have this conversation in uh, the industry, and I have for many, many years, um, we're simply uh, having a conversation with people who are uh, have open hearts and open minds and who want to funnel, shoehorn a, um, a very large experience into what is already known. And that does not serve what we are doing. 
uh, and who we and what we are being. That does not serve it at all. So we realized that the only way that we can maintain the spirituality and the integrity and the modeling of what it is that we uh, intend to achieve is to create it independently. So that's the first part. The second part is why crowdfunding? Well, crowdfunding, okay, first esoterically, crowdfunding, uh, the technology, like consciousness itself, seems to me to always be seeking more freedom, more freedom, more freedom. And so there's a glorious convergence of these incredible movements toward freedom. To beyond that esoteric stuff, in a very practical way, uh, it allows us to connect with our audience. It allows us uh, to become co-creators with our audience. It empowers our audience to participate with us. And there is a very long history of this. Um, we are very used to supporting the theater, to supporting ballet, and to supporting opera, and to supporting even like I kind of, even though my daughter graduated years ago from a very overpriced uh, college, I continue to get requests to support their alumni fund and their uh, athletic teams. So we're very used to this. Uh, and it's still confrontive to some people. I had a conversation not too long ago. Okay, I'll fess up. With my father in law, I love you, Dad, if you're watching. And he said, You know, why should people support you? I mean, why? Should that's, come on, what are you smoking? <laughs> and I said, well, my father-in-law happens to be a professional career politician. Um, for many years, he was the counselor for North York. I'm busted, you dead. And he is, you know, for years, most recently, the deputy mayor of Toronto for a bunch of terms. And I said to him, you know, um, you have a vision, and people voted for you, and they sent in campaign contributions, and they put you in office because you had a vision, and they, you have a very comfortable life because you enrolled people into a vision, and you were stewards of a vision. And for some reason, what we are doing um, is still a little bit on the margins, and so um, folks are more likely to push back on what we're doing than on what you're doing. And you know, to his credit and his, he has a beautiful heart, he, he got it. Um, so why are we doing crowdfunding? Because we cannot make the movie that we want to make in the way that you expect to see it by going to um, the Hollywood system, nor will it be distributed in the way that we want it to be distributed. Um, and because we want your participation, and it matters, and uh, the training wheels are off. They're off for me. I'm very public with this now. I was um, uh, I was in a, a, the spiritual closet for a, a lot of years, and I've been at this since I was six years old. So um, 